Welcome to the Middle Room Workshop. Today I'm going to review the Longer Ray 5 20 Watt Laser Engraver. Without further ado, let's get into it! I have already reviewed this machine in the past, uh, specifically uh, the one with the 5 Watt Laser Module, which was the original machine, and recently I've reviewed Longer's 10 Watt Laser Module. Now, in today's video, I'm going to concentrate mostly on the performance of the machine with the 20 watt laser module. Now, a quick note, I received this machine free of charge. However, I'm not being paid uh, by Longer or any one of uh, their affiliate. So, um, as usual, I like to keep my uh, reviews unbiased and any opinion, any thought that I'm going to share in this video, uh, they're going to basically be my honest opinion about this product. So with this out of the way, let's get into the video. The machine is practically the same like the 5 and 10 watt version, uh, with the only difference being the uh, 120 watt upgraded main board, which is necessary to work with a 20 watt laser module, and the uh, plate on the trolley where the uh, 20 watt laser module uh, get installed. Everything else isn't changed. Now, because of the larger size of the laser module, the overall engraving area of the machine basically drops from 400 times 400 millimeters to 375, 375. Now, this is not a big deal. Uh, it's 25 millimeters, approximately an inch off from both the vertical and the horizontal, but it's something worth uh, keeping in mind in case you are uh, expecting projects that are uh, bigger than that. Now, despite the machine is the same, there are a few interesting upgrades, one of which I was very happy to find out, and that is the added micro switches, which allows the machine to have a home, uh, or in other words, which allow the machine to work in absolute coordinate system. Now, this is, in my opinion, a game changer, because now you can use your machine uh, to work larger, complex projects and have a peace of mind that uh, in case something goes wrong, you can always restart from origin uh, or you can basically run multi-passes or perform corrections. I mean, there are a lot of benefits on working in absolute coordinate system and that is normally what you find in professional machines. The second thing is a slight upgrade in the adjustment of the height for the laser module. So now you basically get a 9mm clearance plate which you place directly beneath the module, so between the module and the material. Then you drop the laser module by loosening the knobs and when you're done you tighten the up. Now it is not a big improvement compared to what you were uh, doing with the 5 and 10 watt laser module, however, not having to place uh, the clearance cylinder on the back side makes the overall process less awkward and more straightforward. So I like this approach more than uh, the 5 and 10 watt. With the machine, I've also received the uh, hair pump by Longer, so it was bundled together. Now I'll give you a quick thought about this hair pump. The air pump is nothing particular, um, I mean it's a typical air pump that you uh, would buy for your laser engraver. Uh, the only thing that I can say is that it's very, very uh, quiet, uh, remarkably quiet I would say, and it performs well uh, with the engraving. Uh, beside, uh, it doesn't warm up as much, so you can run long projects without problems. All right, let's now talk about the capabilities of the machine. As usual, uh, when I get a new machine or a new laser module, I'm running uh, a bunch of tests in order to assess the capability and the performance of the machine. Uh, and usually I run this testing with the materials that I use uh, the most. So starting with engraving on birch playwood, um, as you can see, it produces good results all the way up to 10,000 millimeters per minute, which is the rated uh, top speed for this machine and so once you do the test you can see on the uh, metrics uh, you can simply select the color tone that you like the most and to go for it. Then picture engraving on MDF I went at 8000 millimeters per minute Jarvis mode 40% in power 
and a line interval of 0.12 millimeters per minute. So I can, as you can see, it wasn't very well visible in the uh, engraving test with the cat, but um, it got more visible with the picture. Then cutting three millimeters, 3.2 millimeters, which is approximately one eighth of an inch birch plywood, you can cut cleanly at 500 millimeters per minute, 95% power. Now you could go even faster, you could go as fast as 600 millimeters per minute, but you will end up with stringing on the back side, which means rough edges. Um, and so that's normally not something that you would want to have. Now I run my testing using uh, the provided air pump uh, so that you can basically see uh, how it performs. And as you can see, the cuttings came out relatively clean. Now they're not perfect. Uh, again, you're not using a compressor. Would you use a compressor that will make the cutting very clean? However, they're clean enough uh, knowing that you are talking about an air pump. Then 3.2 millimeters acrylic in a single pass, 300 millimeters per minute, 90% power. 1.5 millimeters ABS, single pass again, 1000 millimeters per minute, 90% in power. Now, having this much power in hand and the ability to work in absolute coordinate system, I've decided to do something a little bit different than my usual review. Um, and that is to basically tackle some uh, real project, that is a project for a client, so that I could test the performance in a professional application. And I have to tell you, I got impressed with the result. I mean, I kept the machine running for five and a half hour straight with three short pauses of less than five minutes, which were needed in order to change the setup. So to change the material basically. And the last engraving came out as good as the first one. I mean, I didn't notice any drop in power and I didn't have any other problems whatsoever uh, despite using the machine for so long. Uh, so this also uh, goes to prove that the cooling performance of the laser module is remarkably well. Uh, plus working in absolute coordinate system allowed me to basically uh, do the engraving without hair first and then to run the engraving and cutting which required hair since the machine uh, as of right now uh, does not allow you to control air assist. Then the following day I basically run some additional project for other clients, additional three hours straight and everything came out good. I didn't have any problems whatsoever. Now with this said, this is not a professional machine. Uh, neither is going to replace my professional 80 watt CO2 laser which would have definitely run much faster uh, for the project that I uh, did with this machine. But this is going to basically prove that you can tackle some tough job without any problems whatsoever. All right, let me now share with you the pros and the cons. So that is what I like, what I don't like, and what I think it should be improved. Starting with the pros. Now the price is the first point. Uh, in my opinion, right now the price is stop. With $800, you basically get away a 20 watt laser module, which works remarkably well. And uh, not only works well, but you also get it with micro switches, which works in absolute coordinate system and an offline controller. Then the laser module is built in air nozzle, which means that uh, once you install the module, uh, you can basically plug in your hair hose and you are good to go. Now, one thing that I, was also happy with, and that's why I'm going to add it in the Pro, is that the machine, the laser module sits a little bit higher with respect to your material, which means that you have some extra clearance and you are going to be able to use your clumping devices uh, without problems. So usually what happens is you have a laser module that sits very low, like two and a half, three millimeters from the material, and you are literally unable to drop magnets or some other clumping device to keep your uh, shit down. And also the other thing that may happen is that uh, basically the laser module catches up onto your warped material. 
So this is, I have to say, uh, a big point of frustration when you go to your machine and then you find out that an hour of job was simply ruined up because the laser module catched into the material. So uh, having the laser module sitting a little bit higher, now it is not much, it's nine millimeter, but it so happened to uh, clear off my magnets, the eight millimeter magnets that I used to clamp down the material. And so I can work with it without any problem. Last but not least, the added micro switches, which allows the machine to work in absolute coordinate system. Now, this wouldn't normally be a pro for a machine, but since uh, the previous model didn't have it, um, I'm adding it up like a pro. Now, what I think it should be improved? Well, I would definitely like to see an onboard control for air assist, so you can toggle uh, the air on and off through light barn through the layering system without having to manually run layers with and layers without air. All right, what didn't I like? Uh, well, there was actually only one thing that I didn't like so far up to this point, and that is the fun. Now, the fun is very loud. Um, I wouldn't complain much about the fun because uh, the machine performs very well in cooling, uh, so it keeps the laser module cool and that's what allows the module to work uh, for extended period of time. However, what I don't like is that uh, the fan keeps running uh, even when the machine is not working. So while the machine is idling, while you are setting it up, while you're doing all your things, uh, the fan keeps on running. So it would be nice if you either have the option or if automatically the fan stop running while you're doing other things. All right, it is time for the conclusions. So should you buy it, should you consider it, or should you discard it? Now, considering the price, uh, the power, which will allow you to work way faster than a typical five and 10 watt machine, uh, the added micro switches, which will allow you to work uh, in absolute coordinate system, um, then the offline controller, which of course will allow you to work offline, and then the ability to tackle large, long projects like you would in a professional machine, I would definitely throw it into the cart and go for it. All right, this is pretty much all. Now, I hope you found my video informative. If you liked it, click the thumb up button below. If you have any comments, leave them in the comment section below. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like this one. Ciao for now!